I tried so hard not to be Muslim. Yeah. But a lot of the time, those types of roles that they want you to play is the high school uh, partying, drinking. He literally is the play, heartthrob, by the way. Heartthrob yes. type of character. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just, you know, I'm, I said, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this on camera. I'm not doing this. I'm not yes. doing this. There's no reason why he can't be a Muslim leading actor in Hollywood. Yes. There's no reason yeah. why yeah. even a Muslim, as a confident Muslim, he cannot lead productions in Hollywood. Number one. <laughs> Allah, 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 Allah. Allah. Is this being recorded? No, no, of course yeah, not. Yeah, 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 yeah. No problem, inshallah. <laughs> you know, the fact that at, at the age of 19... Even searching for God yes. and trying to understand like your purpose and like these are very big, mm. like philosophical, you know, th and I was even joking around with him like people 90 years old on their deathbed have not had these conversations yes. with themselves. Yes. And I just started to realize that the Western idea of that, you know, materialistic wealth and, and all uh, and these types of things, it's all a scam. A'udhu <laughs> billahi Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum, welcome to the Islam Channel Podcast. And today we're joined by two very special guests. First, we're joined by Buna Muhammad, who is a Canadian spoken word poet and writer of, of, of Oromo uh, descent. His parents came to Canada as political refugees seeking asylum in the country after their involvement with the Oromo liberation movement in Ethiopia. Having grown up in downtown Toronto area and attending Oakwood Collegiate Institute, he excelled in theatre and drama. He graduated at the top of his class and was named valediction before enrolling in Ryerson University and graduating from the radio and television arts program in 2011. In 2007, Buna Muhammad won the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation Poetry Face-Off. He's getting very embarrassed here, but we like this. Best New Artist Award. We like, we like talking about what our guests have done. Uh, followed by Playwright Residency at the Theatre Pass Moriel in Toronto. He's the founder of Safina Media and wrote and starred in his breakthrough film Tug of War in 2015, which documented the lives of two young Muslim men who had become uh, exposed to radicalized Islam. And if that's not enough, if that's not enough, I said we've got two special guests. Our second guest is Drew Davis, also known as Amin Davis, who is a Canadian actor known for roles on television in Orphan Black, uh, Oscar Hendrick, Rookie Blue as Leo Nash, and Disney XD movie Bunks as Grinsberg. He was born in Toronto, Ontario. He booked his first major role when he was six years old. Yes, very young in the Lifetime original movie Taken From Me, The Tiffany Rubin Story, where he starred opposite Taraji P. Henson and Terry O'Quinn. His most recent movie role was in Born to be Blue, Bo, opposite Ethan Hawke. Yes, Ethan Hawke, the Hollywood actor. Oh, Drew has also had an extensive voice resume, having voiced the character of Max in season five of the Nickelodeon series Max and Ruby. He is the voice of Justin in Just in Time and Marshall on the Nickelodeon series Port Patrol. So kids, if you're listening, this is who <laughs> voice in Port Patrol. You watch this as children. Gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to this podcast. Pleasure to have you both here. Thank you very much for so having us. <laughs> Hopefully we've embarrassed you oh with your God. plaudits. Uh, just a little. Just a little. It's just the worst. <laughs> Hearing your own credits. You're just like, oh my God. No, but there's such an extensive, this both of you, such accomplished, both from, from Canada. Firstly, I've got to ask. It, mm. it is, it is. you know, your, Canada, I know, is cold. It is December. Yes. It's normally cold. Is it warmer here in the UK? It is. it is actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I yeah. think, you know, oddly enough, um, this time of the year in Canada normally is actually quite cold. You're talking about right. we get into like negative 25. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like you don't want to leave your house. Yes. Um, so coming here and you're, you know, it's like five degrees zero. <laughs> We're like, oh, this is like summer for us. This is amazing. You know, it, when you say minus 25, is that Fahrenheit? Celsius. No, Celsius. 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 We're in the wow. same ballpark as you guys. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Hold on. That, yeah, that, that yeah. is cold. That yeah. is very cold. So, so you can't even get out. You don't want to get out. <laughs> you just stay home. Like you just take a whole week off and just relax. You know, if it gets that bad. But yeah, gosh, amazing. That. At least you, you would have had. A, you know, it would have been snowing. It would have been a white kind of. Well, I know it's December, Christmas time. Why <laughs> yeah. We don't get that here in the UK. No. We pray for it. I know, but we never get it. Yeah, it's it's uh, the weather there is nothing to you know. If if you've grown up in it, you get used to it. But it's yes. it's not all. It's cracked up to be no, yeah. because it's wonderful to have you have you both there thank you. now now of course Buna no stranger to our viewers here on Islam yes. channel wonderful to have you you back and, thank you very and, much. and I mean this is your debut yes. here on, on the channel and there, there were so many starring roles there that we were going through you know I've got to ask this where does Islam channel podcast feature in that list 
<laughs> no pressure. Number one. <laughs> Allah, 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 yeah, so, uh, you know, Amin Davis, mashallah, it's, it's his first mm. tour, his first time performing in the UK. Although, oddly enough, he actually has British citizenship. So yes. for the Brits out there, right. be happy to know that he's going to be welcomed in this country. You know, yes. anytime you need inshallah. him, he's there, inshallah. Oh, fantastic. So he's on tour right now with the Vocal Arts Festival tour, um, right. featuring acts like Ilyas Mao, Esam, uh, Sayyid, Saif Adams, uh, and a lot of, mashallah, ma- you know, Muslim Bilal, like you're talking about the OGs in the game. Yeah. So, you know, for us to be able to include some fresh blood, new blood yes. into that lineup, oh, you know, fantastic. it's amazing. Yeah. Well, see, I mean, what we have to do in this kind of scenario is we need you to prove your Britishness. Oh, <laughs> yes. Well, actually, you know, funny, I did a Samsung commercial a long oh, time right, ago, yeah, and yeah. I had to do a British accent. They they uh, auditioned all across the UK and yeah. ended up casting me to do, oh. a, to do a British accent. I, I want to so, hear this British accent. I, no, no, no. We're not doing it. No, no, no. no, 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 no. I can't do it. Just say water. Water. Water, that's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can cast them on Game of Thrones or whatever you guys got going on. Just for now. You know? You know, because I was in the States a couple... I, I, know, I know I shouldn't demean the Canadians by comparing the States with Canada. Please. Yeah. But we are was, very different. They're very different yeah. and, and so much better. Uh, yes. got, I, I'm not ashamed to say that. Yeah, I do yeah, have good yeah. American friends. I don't want to be kicked out then. I don't no want problem. to be allowed back in. But no, I do like the Canadians so much more friendly. But when I was in, I said, can I have some water? They'd look at you like, what? What did you just say? <laughs> and then they'd go, oh, I love that British accent. And you're like, no, but that's how you, sp- that's English. Uh, that's how you say water. It's, 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 it's water. They're like, water. Yeah, they do yeah, like yeah. water over there. Yeah, we say water. Uh, yeah, yeah. But you, I mean, you know, it's funny. I think a lot of times when we come, when I come to the UK, at least, yes. you know, you hear a lot of the slang, especially in places like London. Yes. You know, the yes. way they speak. And I feel like maybe I should come here and start teaching English. Because <laughs> it feels like the Brits have lost their way. You know, people are. True. Yeah, true. I, I'm going, uh, they say, I'm going hospital. I, I'm going, instead of saying, I'm going to the hospital yeah. they'll say I'm going hospital I'm going uni yeah there's yeah. a lot of like they cut out words and you know it's, it's a northern influence it is yeah. it is it's people like my wife who are uh, from up north yeah, I, gotta I, mean, stay, like, I gotta stay out of this now brother. it's That's just what... it's just you know they don't speak English they drop the the yes. so, so it'd be like you know if they were saying internet it's almost like they put an apostrophe yes. after the T to say put on internet and you think what's a internet uh, they're saying the internet right but they've put a you know apostrophe huh. before the thing and you think it's just the, it's yeah. one word. What's so difficult about saying that? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, it's so funny because if you just travel like one hour outside of London or you yes. go two hours, like a completely different accent. Yes. You know, yeah. so that's the other thing. Like the, even the accents vary so much according to where you are in the country. Whereas in Canada, I think for the most part, it's pretty bland. Like everyone talks the same, uh, you know, even across the, and it's a large mass, right? A huge true. country. That is true. Yeah. yeah so absolutely. it's very interesting. I think the culture is, uh, you know, a lot of different pockets within the country of the UK that sound different but they do they mm. do but, but it's London is where we speak properly right yes, sure. I've, yes. Heard, I've heard I've heard <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. yes so it's Dan Saf Dan Saf see we don't, we don't yeah. it's not like my wife keeps saying one we don't get our THs out okay. so we make that into an F uh, so yeah. Saf as opposed to South mm. and then we, we'd like to drop our H's yes. I don't know why especially in East London mm. in the old Cockney we used to drop it so, so we're talking about hospital you'd say hospital 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 yeah. down to the hotel Gonna stay around yeah. the hotel tonight. You know, so it was just—it's was, it's, it's really weird, really weird. Can you say that in a British accent? No, no, I'm not doing okay. that. This is what a test your Britishness. <laughs> no, 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 no. Now that I know he's got a good British, I'm gonna bring it out this of him is somehow. Not, this is not what we're here for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But see, this could get you a role. We could get you a role. He could be I, the next host of uh, Slam Channel. Exactly. There you exactly. Go. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this would be the top of the result. Now, now, on that point, on that point yeah. about um, uh, various roles, I'll be talking about the roles. Now, I was reading this earlier, and we were sharing. I was looking at this extensive list. Of, of roles that you have played. And I know we gave a snippet just there in an in introduction. Mm. Of course, we talked about Taken From Me, the Tiffany Rubin story. Yeah. Uh, you're a voice in Max and Ruby. Yeah. Uh, you starred in A Dark Truth, which is a film featuring one of my favorite all-time actors, Andy Garcia. Yeah. Oh. Amazing, Andy Garcia. Yeah, yeah. Eva Longoria. Yeah. Um, I, I do think she's a great actress as well, by the way. Mm-hmm. Wonderful actress. And Forrest Whitaker, the other legend. Amazing. Yes. Amazing, amazing yeah. caster that you were with. Um, not only that, you starred in Bunks, of course, the Disney movie. Mm-hmm. Um, you were in the kid cartoon series, Doozers. Yep. Mm. Doozers. Um, you were in Odd Squad. Yeah. Odd Squad, my kid's favourite. My f- kid's all-time favourite show. And I, I remember watching it with them. Um, 
as a dad, not as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> You've appeared in the BBC's Orphans Black. Mm-hmm. And you were the voice of Danny Taroz on the kids' series Arthur. You played Marshall in Paw Patrol for 71 episodes. You were Emmy nominated, guest starred in the Big Top Academy for 44 episodes, a guest starred in the DC HBO series Titans. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Remind me, how old are you again? I'm 19. 19? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How has this happened? Mash- I mean, mashallah, firstly, yeah, mashallah. Yeah, mashallah. Mashallah. But he's, he's, mashallah. he's butcher, yeah. He's just. He's a butcher. He's, uh, yeah. It's just, and, and, and you have a British accent as well. So, you know, all of that. <laughs> but, I shouldn't I, have said that now. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing we're going to talk about <laughs> now. Yeah, yeah. This, we're going to come back to it somehow. This is going to be the highlight of this, yeah, of this whole podcast. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it's the British. And we're going to make sure he speaks in a British accent before we go. Before yeah, we yeah. go. But, but this is quite a remarkable resume, all before the age of 19. Where did it all begin? It all began at six years old. Um, wow. Yeah, alhamdulillah. My, my dad actually used to be an actor. Um, and so he's kind of the one that put me into it. And I never felt forced into anything. I just, you know, they put me into it to see how I liked it. And uh, I just fell in love with it right away. Um, being on sets and stages and stuff. And alhamdulillah, it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's I, I, what ironic thing is, it's not just him. Obviously, his sister as well is yes, also a yeah. very accomplished actress. But the fact that, you know, he was able to maintain a career for Ooh. that many years, because a lot of kids, and you can attest to this, yes. a lot of kids enter the industry mm. and, you know, for whatever reason, it's, it's a yes. very cutthroat industry as well, yes. even just yeah. to survive, you know. So the fact that he has a resume that long mm. is extraordinary and it's not the norm for even no, child actors yeah. I, mean, I'm that with Charlie, I mean if you think of people like Macaulay Culkin right, right. So, so you had the Home Alone series started in a few films and there was there was a longevity right and, yeah. the, and then it just ended yeah. but Marshall here it seems like you've you've managed to find that perfect transition mm. from being the kind of the, the, the child star mm. to now kind of you know the teenage heartthrob let's let's call it the heartthrob for me right? or him um, I was going to say me, but let's go. Because <laughs> I thought, yeah, okay. In a past life, perhaps past, I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few, few years ago, but yeah, it's, it's his turn now. It's yeah. his turn now. It's, we're, we're getting gold. We're, we're like the middle-aged heartthrobs now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if I yeah, can yeah. say that. For the aunties and we're, the... Uh... We're, we're like the middle, middle-aged throwaways is what we are now. They're, we're, we're the regions. Just They're the like, throbs. We're just the throbs. <laughs> no heart, just throbs. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, fair Absolutely. enough. Yeah. Uh, gosh, you asked my wife. That's exactly what she would say. She would agree with that completely. Um, and now, Marshall, you know, we're, we're, you know, like you say, you know, in 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 all these leading roles now, Marshall as well. So, what do you think has been the secret to that, to ensuring that longevity? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, the secret to all that, I don't know. I don't know if there is really a secret. <laughs> I would say just, uh, I, I think passion, obviously, you know, and uh, hard work. I was always like I've taken lots of classes and stuff on my off time and studied a lot of you know people. Um, other actors and watch movies and stuff like that. Um, but I don't know if there's really a secret. I, it, honestly, it feels like it's all just happened. It feels like when I sit back and I listen to you like reading off all the stuff, it's almost like it feels like a whole other life now. <laughs> like, subhanAllah, it's really... Uh, yeah, but I, can I, I... I don't want to interject, but yes. sure. I think part of it is he's extremely talented. Yes. That's the yeah, reality, that absolutely. he's been able to flourish and have this long of a career because... I mean, starting off as a six-year-old child, getting in the industry and acting. His father, obviously, is an actor as well. So he comes from a family of artists. Mm. You know, his parents actually run a musical theater program. Yes. So he didn't mention that part, but he grew up in that environment. He's yeah. literally been cultivated as an artist, you know, as yes. a child. Yeah. So I think, you know, I, I give a lot of credit to his parents as well. No, they actually did an amazing job, and they spent a lot of time, you know, even just exposing him to that world of arts. Yes. Which, yeah. as an artist myself, like, yeah. I dreamed about that as a child you know that having that yeah so, and, and half the time that, that's not something we're ever exposed to growing up yeah so to be in that kind of environment and and also to keep you level-headed throughout sure. that whole thing is a big sure. thing and also creativity is a like it's a muscle at the end of the day right yes. and i think uh some people whether it be through their families or environment or whatever are kind of shunned for expressing a creative side mm. um but I've, I've kind of always it's kind of been fostered into me and always let my imagination run three run yeah. free yes and so it's i think that's helped me a lot as well you know getting into roles being able to fully embody them and even with uh, nasheed now alhamdulillah mm. it's helped a lot with you know expressing myself through different art forms yeah, yeah. Mm. so, so what, what's that now, now what i want you to do for us uh, i mean because I know you've you've directed a movie and you've started in your movie mm. as well, right? I've, I've never been in a movie. So if I was auditioning for a movie, what would be the tips 
We could maybe practice. Give us some tips. Let's see if we can do it. I'm doing a, uh, we have a Bollywood George Clooney role that oh. we're thinking about uh, <laughs> possibly including you in. So uh, speak to your management or your representation. Uh, Sign me up already. Sign me up already. <laughs> yeah, but go, go ahead. Uh, you can okay. Answer. Tips for if you were auditioning. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, as a casting director, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd first, a lot of the time, you know, they're looking for the character to enter the room many times right so that's number one especially for child actors so i guess you don't count for that <laughs> um but you know be confident like the dad okay yeah. there you go yeah, there yeah. you go you know what know do you what mean you... by that when they say the character enters the room like how does yeah that like um if you've got a if you've got a confident character if you've got a loud character whatever it is you got to walk in the room already playing that role mm. not to ah, maybe its full extent right but you right. just you have to you have to people have to you know, you have to be able to walk in, and a lot of the time, you know, whether it's for good or for bad, people will judge off of your their first appearance, right? Right. right. Um, and so, making sure that first appearance is one that you want to stick mm. with them. Sometimes it'll be as simple as them seeing you and being like, "That's him," you know. Mm. Yeah. And then, and if the acting's on okay, then they'll just be like, "Okay, yeah." Yeah. Um, mm. So. That's what, cause I remember reading this about Sean Connery. Mm. So when he auditioned for, I think it was the very first James Bond film, Doctor No. Mm. When he entered, I think the thing he did, he, he took his hat off and threw it and it landed on the on the hat rack. And I think in one of the, the James Bond films, not that I watched them, uh, but yeah, I've heard, I've heard. Uh, when he, throws, he, he repeats that act. And I think mm. that's what impressed the director. Mm. So it's almost exactly what you're saying. It's about carry yourself with that confidence as you sure. go into the room. Sure. Almost like you've embraced the character. Yeah. I wish we could do that here, but we haven't got the space. But we could try and embracing the character. Yeah, something or I can throw, throw at something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or start something at the producer, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll do something like yeah, that. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, of course, you know, you, you're, you're, you, you've started, we're talking about a dark truth, um, or I want to talk about dark truth, because you started with one of my favorite all-time actors, mm. Andy Garcia. Yeah. What was it like performing with him? Oh, he's a great guy. I mean, yeah. uh, again, these are things that I was... Uh, so young like it takes a long it's, a, it's hard for me to even reach back into my memories <laughs> uh, so I love it I filming on that show was amazing all, all the actors like took really really good care of us alhamdulillah it was uh, mm. and uh, the one thing I really remember is like we had a scene where we're getting chased um, with guns and they're obviously they're blank guns on yes. when we're filming yeah um, but we were running through the forest um, and uh I just I remember that being like a core memory for me. Running through the forest, I have Forrest Whitaker, Eva Longoria. <laughs> yeah. Me and my sister actually played uh, siblings yes. on oh, at, right. in the film right, together. Right. Mm. Yeah, but alhamdulillah, they they were all very nice people, and it was a great experience. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And and did you find that makes life easier having your because obviously your sister's a fellow actor mm. as well. So performing with her, having another sibling with you there, does that sure. make the, the whole? I thing think probably easier? made it easier for her. I'm the older sibling. Ah, so right, I'm, right. I'm the one kind of being. Uh, the bigger brother uh, <laughs> yeah so so it's definitely easier in that sense yeah for sure and, and, and do, do you find you end up squabbling because siblings do right at home all the time <laughs> but on set on set never no, ah, never right. never we've got too much uh dignity for that professionalism <laughs> is there yeah, <laughs> yeah. and of course just for the benefit of our viewers who have watched Odd Squad I believe yeah. your sister played Mrs. O Miss O yeah Miss O yeah. I should call her Mrs. Miss yeah. O yeah, I don't know she yeah. wasn't married that <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I hope she was six at the time. I think yeah, was she six? Seven? But yeah. no, because I, I remember that because that, that that's the that's the that's like the, the secret service for children. Yes. yes. To use it, James Bond and that. There you go. It all links. There you go. It all comes together. Go. Maybe she walked in throwing her. Hat. <laughs> <laughs> that's how she got the role. Yeah. You know, it's actually that that show. Um, I mentioned to you know, I mean, I told him that like my kids also love that show. Yes. And I yeah. watched that show even before I met him. And right. during the pandemic, subhanallah, we were locked down, and I remember like my kids and I, you know, would come on, we would watch it. And I commented even to my wife how refreshing it was to see a young black girl also mm. leading a show. Yes. Right? Yeah. Even for my daughter to see that and yeah. for, for her to see like, wow, there's someone who looks like me on TV. Yes. Like I told his parents like how even, not even knowing them at the time, how even inspired we were, you know, mm. as, as, as colored people just to yes. see people who look like us even on the screen. So, you know, it was uh, just funny how it all came together in yeah. the end that I ended up meeting him. And what was it like? Because obviously now, now you formed this friendship. You're, of course, managing Amin as well. We're going to talk about that in a bit as mm. well, inshallah. But what was that like when you met Amin for the first time? Or well, it was Drew at the time, I guess. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. What was that, that, that like? I mean, it's a it's a, a long story. We have a podcast Crazy actually story. that we did as ah, well. So right. we can, you know, it's called The Muslim Experience. It's spelled out there as well. But I'll just give a summary of it. Basically... Um, and you fill in any of the blanks that I missed. Sure. Um, this is all from Allah. Yes. 
this is something that you know it, t- it, t- it taught me a lot even about qadr and how you know things just fall into place subhanallah i was actually hosting a conference right in a western city in canada called calgary and um i remember before you could, did you meet brett the hitman Hart? i did not i <sighs> i think he was out of town that weekend Damn. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> put in my request but he's he was out of town um so I was, you know, hosting this conference, and uh, I, in the middle of the conference, I shown a trailer for my film. I have a film called Purple Don't Cry that I right. was touring at the time. I'm still touring, coming to the UK soon. Oh, my camera. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Inshallah. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, in the midst of the conference, there's a break, uh, and you know, I'm just talking with people, and people coming up to me, and you know, introducing themselves, and then this young guy walks up to me, and it's just like, hey. Um, Salam alaikum. I'm an actor. I saw your trailer. You know, I'd love to connect. Yeah. And I told, I said in the podcast, I was like, you're an actor. Yeah, okay, sure. You know, everybody tells me they're an actor. You know, it's like, yeah, good luck with that, brother. You yeah, know, yeah. but I told him, okay, you send me your, give me your information, social media. I checked them out. And then I saw his resume. Right. I saw some of his social media. If you go to like uh-huh. at that Drew Davis online, uh, his other profile now is at that Amin Davis as well. But uh, just the pictures that he had, you know, scenes with Jeremy Renner, mm-hmm. scenes with like all the stuff he did when he was a kid. And I was, I was shocked that I was like, oh. Because he looks so young. I was the same thing. I was like, yeah. how have you done all these things, yes. right? And then when you put his name into IMDb and you literally see the list, I mean, you just highlighted the, you just yes. skimmed through the I highlights. skimmed through, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you actually go through his resume, it doesn't make sense, like, for a person that young to have done that many things. And so immediately I was like, oh, we got to hang out. Like, you know, come to my office. We chatted. And from there, alhamdulillah, we, you know, I think his journey even to Islam and how much and I, I don't want to praise him too much, Andy, because he's here. But you know how much zeal and mm-hmm. and love he has for Islam and wanting to learn and and you know really prioritizing his Islam before anything. To me, even as a, he's he's a new Muslim, you know, I met yes. him when he was like four months into Islam. Like I was very impressed from that side alone. Yes. Just the fact that as as such a new Muslim, he was mm-hmm. that like interested coming out to events and trying to integrate himself in the community and not really even knowing many you know muslims mm-hmm. in the community so that part automatically i was just you know i was just really inspired to see a young brother yes. coming into islam uh but quickly we realized that you know i work mainly in non-union films right okay? i do the uh, I, I do you know a lot of undercover stuff you know yes. stuff that yeah yeah <laughs> I'm a sweatshop yeah I mean, <laughs> pretty much you know i run a creative sweatshop so <laughs> Employ children, you know, all that kind of stuff, you know? <laughs> a lot of stuff that I'm not very proud of at the moment, but, uh, you know, you get the job done. So, of you course, know... We should say, he doesn't for the record. No, no, no. He doesn't well, I have employed job. children, but oh, obviously with their parents. With their parents, because like yeah, of, yeah, yeah, of course. Yes, Super yes, hijabi yeah. coming to a theater in you as well, inshallah. <laughs> okay. So, you know, um, immediately I knew that because he's a unionized actor, right? Yes. He's a professional actor. So I knew there would be some conflict there. Like, I, uh, perhaps I couldn't work with him as an actor, but then I was thinking, okay, well, I just got to step my game up. I got to yes. somehow start producing more uh, films that, you know, require unionized mm. crew. Um, but then I asked him, like, you know, do you do anything else? Do you do you produce? Do you want to write? Do yes. you... And he said, I, I think I... I don't know who asked who, but I... Yeah, you, so you asked me if I had any interest directing or writing once right. you found out that it wouldn't really work on the film-wise. Right. And then I was like, well, I never wrote a script before, but I've been writing music my whole life, and I write music. Ah, and he's right. like, oh, can you sing? I was like, yeah, I can sing. And uh, he's like, oh, okay, send me something. And so I had one nasheed that I had like just tried out. So I kind of just stopped making all music after I came to Islam. And then... Uh, and then I heard one actually of Muslim Bilal's tracks. Right. Shout that, out Muslim Bilal. Yeah, shout out Muslim yeah. Bilal. Um, he and he had like he was doing his poetry, but over some backing. Mm. Um, and so then I was like, oh, I could do this and probably like sing or write something to yeah. it. Mm. So I tr- so I grabbed a like vocals only track from offline, and I just you know started writing. Right. And then I had that recording, um, and so when he asked me to send him something, I sent him this track, and. Uh, I was shocked. <laughs> wow. And like, and uh, this is the thing. I, I mentioned it in our podcast. Like, I'm hypercritical of artistry, nasheed, poetry. Yes. Like, that's my, my field. So, yeah. you know, rightly so. Absolutely. I was shocked beyond words that he, first of all, had written it. Right. And then the fact that he could sing that well. Wow. I hadn't come across something like that before, yeah. to be honest with you. Like, it felt very surreal in the moment because I was like, oh, my God, this is incredible yes. yeah you know yeah. and um uh, you know instantly i think 
you know, I made a, like I, it's, it feels like I'm replaying the podcast in my head because I feel like I said a lot of these things, but I felt like in, in, instantly I made all these connections in my head, like where he we could go. You know, the fact that as a young person, he's right now in a position where he connects so well with young kids, yes. right? Yeah. You know, he's talking about the face of Paw Patrol and you know all these major kids yeah. cartoons and series. So the fact that like if we can even just position him to be you know inspirational for young Muslim kids, yes. like I was like that's amazing. But then getting to know him more and understanding more about even his artistic style and his writing and his penmanship mm. is so strong. Yeah. And again, I feel weird because he's here, but he is such a good writer and I am a poet. So you have a poet telling, uh, yes. giving you the stamp. Yes. yes. That his writing is legitimately, you know, amazing. Uh, vocal range like you couldn't imagine. Yeah. And now he's just started producing his own songs as well. Oh, wow. So actually, Ilyas Mao, mashallah, many people, viewers will know, you yes. know, is a famous f- famous singer, producer. I was working with him for the last few months as well. Right. Um, but now, just in the last few weeks and months, he's also become a producer. So, oh. you know, at his age, really, sky's the limit. There's nothing he can't do. You know, I, I think that. And I feel like, you know, even in terms of his knowledge in Islam, that's still growing. He's still yes. learning. He's a student with Al Maghrib Institute, right. learning Arabic, learning Quran. You know, people have to imagine like this is a guy who a year ago did not believe in God. Mm. You know, yeah. he didn't come from a background of faith. You know, didn't have that kind of social yes. uh, fabric around religion. So the fact that now he's come into religion and now he is, uh, you know, almost like an ambassador for us in many different faculties is. It's honestly, it's remarkable even just to see it up close. No, I mean, we, we, we want to test those vocal cords in a bit. Yes. But, but I am really intrigued now because you've raised a really interesting point that a year ago, God doesn't exist. Mm. Now there's this kind of 300, actually, is it, well, I'll call it, yeah, it's a whole 360. Yeah. Or 180. 180. No, it's a 180. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's 360, you just 360, come back. Start back to where you started. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 180, we've gone the other way. Now, yeah. you? But it's like, you know, you've, you've got this new take on life. You know, there's now faith in God where, you know, attending seminars, lectures, trying to do, you know, uh, write. And when you're writing, the writings on Islamic, you know, nasheeds and about the mm-hmm. prophet and about God. Where did that all come from? What, what was that change? You know, I, I think uh, it's really just, I, 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 always, I always thought that I was on whatever opinion I had on any topic. I always would think it's the logical, most rational opinion. Mm. And then if it's not, or if I started to have doubts on that being the case, then I would go and I would do my research on it to come to a better like conclusion, mm. right? Um, that's for everything, politics, how I want to live my life religion, God, all this, but I realized that God and religion was one of the topics that I just never, I just never took the time to really think through. Right. It seems so taboo and so, you know, relig- if you believe in God, you're, you're crazy, basically, right, and delusional. And, uh, and so I started to realize I believed those things without really having a reason to believe them. And so it's just been a journey. Um, I'm sure we'll go into it more in depth in the solo uh, interview, inshallah. But because it would be a whole yeah, <laughs> hour long. Well, no, just, talk, talk about it. Because even, even just this morning, ironically <laughs> enough, we were talking about mm. you feeling discontentment with the Western notions of happiness. Yeah, right? yeah, for sure. I think uh, I think that we're we're fed an idea through uh, whether we're conscious about it or not of how our life should look, what success means, what happiness is, mm. what fu- what is the true purpose or goal right and um and i just started to realize that the western idea of that you know materialistic wealth and and all and these types of things it's all a scam like i really felt i started to realize how much of a scam it is to get people to buy into a system that really doesn't have your best interest in mind Mm -hmm. and really you're playing a game that you're you're playing a game that you feel you're stuck in mm-hmm. and once you get in you it is it's very hard to get out yeah and and when you leave when you end the game you end with nothing you go into your grave and you die and that's the end yeah right and that that didn't necessarily plummet me into searching into searching for religion they were two kind of separate um there were two separate searches that were kind of happening at the same time right. i was realizing that this life in terms of uh you know capitalism and stuff like this this life didn't make sense and then I was like okay well what life type of life does make sense Um, so anyways I started to go through uh, just the theories and and 
opinions of whether God exists or not, listening to debates and reading articles and stuff. And by the end of that whole, um, you know, by the end of that search, just on God's existence, I came out of it realizing that it's actually necessary for God to exist, for the, the universe to mm -hmm. exist. Mm -hmm. And so I came, I started basically looking at looking at people that believed in God as delusional yeah. and ended looking at people that didn't as delusional. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like they were trying to just hide away from reality. Yeah. Um, and so after that, I started to search through religions, kind of going through each one, poking at them, trying to disprove them. And Islam was the last one that I looked into. Right. And it was the only one that I couldn't. I tried so hard. Like, I tried so hard not to be Muslim. Yeah. Because I knew what it meant. You know, yeah. I knew what it means in terms of the t the the rules and yes. and uh, from that side, you know, I knew what I would have to give up, mm -hmm. and if it was the truth, then I knew the only logical thing is to follow it yeah. exactly, right? Yeah. Um, so I tried so hard to poke holes in it, and uh, at the end, I just basically said, "Look, I, I at this point, either I'm going to die knowing Islam is the truth and not accepting it, or mm -hmm. I'm going to be a Muslim." Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So after that, it's really been like. Noth I realized that, you know, nothing, logically, if God is powerful over all things and knows all things, it logically makes zero sense mm -hmm. to do anything except for what he says, Yeah, you know? Yeah. So, um, so whether it's, you know, it's panala, this is why to me, even obviously on a, on a face front, uh, front facing level, like me meeting Bona is just crazy in itself yes. how it happened and how we were in two complete we were in a completely different province than yeah. we normally are and by the way we found out later on we left 20 minutes away yeah. from each other ah, yes. in Toronto oh, wow. in Toronto yeah so wow. we were we met in a completely different place yeah only to realize that we were like you're actually neighbors we're like yeah, neighbors in the yeah. same city yeah 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 subhanallah but um but you know for me especially there's an added layer of it where I was you know, going through a time where I was speaking to my agents about, you know, this is happening and these are the things I can't do. And I was going through a period where I was just like, I could, I could take this slow. Like, you know, everybody around me is like, you know, yes. take it slow. Yeah. And they use the hadith like that you told mm -hmm. that you were speaking about, you know, if all the rules came down at yeah, once, then problems. nobody would be Muslim. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's, and, um, and so people around me were telling that, but I was like, I I'm ready to do it. You know, like yeah. it, it doesn't make sense. Why would I do a anything? in any way that displeases God or go, or transgresses mm. his rights upon us can't lead to good. Yeah. You know, it can't lead to objective good. Mm. Um, not one percent, right? Yeah. So, so then the only logical thing is to just, you know, go in the path that seems like, it, like yeah. that seems the most pleasing to him. So, you know, making those like changes and, you know, restrictions and, and kind of uh, sacrifices. I was in a state where I was like, okay, I know you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners. Uh, I don't know how long I'll have to wait. It could be a year. It could be five years until something yeah. works out. And subhanAllah, not even two months goes by after I have that conversation that I meet <laughs> this guy that's like literally <laughs> spoke lit directly to me. Like when he was speaking, that's hosting fun. his yeah. uh, event and playing his trailer, mm. he started speaking about how he wants to, you know, create halal enter uh, entertainment and alternatives yes. yeah. and really provide a space and represent proper representation. Yes. Um, in the media, and I and I was like, that's exactly what I feel is. And could you imagine? I had been going around saying this exact same spiel yes. to like dozens of crowds and audiences. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. oh, we need to create you know Muslim artistry, and we need to invest mm. in the in you know yes. films and this and that. Yeah. And <laughs> it felt like I was in that room. It felt like I was only talking to him. Yeah. Subhanallah. It felt like I yeah. literally had come there just to just to find and filter him out out of the yeah. crowd. Yeah. And I just like out of everyone, I just found this piece of gold, and I was like, "Yep, yeah, I'm good. Wow. You guys, get, you can have the rest." I mean, th this is the beauty of Allah, right? Like, you know, he's 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 opened your heart to something. You're currently trying to create this thing of we want to create a safe space for for Muslim artistry and actors and and performers. And like you say, despite living only 20 minutes apart, Allah decreed for you guys to meet in Calgary. Yeah. To say, I don't know how far Antari is from <laughs> Calgary, but quite far. Quite far, right? Yeah, I can yeah. imagine. So you've got all the way there to attend a talk that Boone is giving, and that basically answered probably that was that last missing question of how do I now bring this together, my 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 profession with my faith? Because I can imagine when you probably had a chat with the agent for the first time, he probably said, "Are you crazy? What's wrong with you? Mm. Well, you're going to throw this all away?" And I, yeah. I imagine that's how. I, it went. I mean, I was basically told. That's fine, you know, do whatever you want, but know that there's a likelihood you won't work until you're 40, you know. 
Right, until uh, you're 40. Uh, not, I'm sorry, not in 40. Not for, for another, like, four or five years. That's oh, right. Right. <laughs> Not until you're 40. <laughs> until you're his age? Bad, bad, bad. I, thought, I thought Korea's over by then. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, uh, okay, because so you saying there's no hope for me? No, no, no. <laughs> no, we're talking about the Bollywood oh, George Clooney. Oh, we're yes, we're working on yes, that. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I already sent the info to your agent. Don't worry, it's in the mail. No, but what he means also by that is that because... You have to understand in in the world of Hollywood. Although he's nineteen on screen, how old do you normally play? Yeah, uh, on screen I would play anywhere from probably sixteen to nineteen. Right. right. But a lot of the time, those types of roles that they want you to play is the high school uh, partying, drinking. He literally is the play, heartthrob, by the way. Heartthrob yes. type of character. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just you know I'm I said I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this on camera. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing yes. this. And she's like, look, this is this is all the breakdowns are for you right yeah. now. This is all the roles that are on the table. And that was the reason why I actually spoke to her is because I wouldn't have spoke to her if there was no need to say anything. But I was getting audition after audition and making up excuses to reject them. Mm -hmm. And it just got to a point where I was like, okay, we need to have a conversation. This I can't be doing this anymore. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it get you get to that point where you just feel like, well, what am I going to do next? You know, it's mm -hmm. just like basically throwing your throwing, giving away all your control. Yeah. But when you know that the one who has all control um, no, you know, when you're doing it for his sake, then inshallah, whatever comes out of it will Absolutely. be. Yeah. And of course, it's very mature thinking as well, because I I'm trying to think what I was thinking as a 19, 18, 19 year old. <laughs> you don't want to hear what I was thinking. <laughs> you know I mean? I'll like, tell you that. <laughs> was I that mature? I don't think we're, Bruno, do you remember that time? Oh my I God. Half of what I was thinking was illegal. <laughs> I, can't even, I can't even talk about it on air, Aki. The, the way in which he... Well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're being candid. They it's, don't, it's, a they don't, it's a safe space. It's a safe space. space. Don't worry, inshallah. <laughs> this is being recorded? No, no, of course yeah, not. Of course. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. No problem, inshallah. <laughs> you know, the fact that at, at the age of 19, even searching for God yes. and trying yeah. to understand like your purpose and like these are very big, mm. like philosophical, you know, th and I was even joking around with him like people 90 years old on their deathbed have not had these conversations yes. with themselves. Yes. You true. know, subhanAllah. So and this is how the beauty of you know, Hidayah, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can guide whoever He wants, mm. you know? And that's the beauty of Islam. Like, it's like, you don't know who will be exposed to this message. Yes. And I think that's the beauty of us even giving da'wah. Yes. You know, and I yeah. think, um, although really, he kind of just gave himself da'wah. He's kind of like a, it was like a, like you didn't really have anyone in your ear no. like forcing you. Actually, that's so true. He, yes. It's kind of like a self-cleaning oven. Like he just yeah. kind of figured it all out on his own, yeah. literally from YouTube. Yeah, I was just yeah. locked in my room for a probably like four or five months, um, spent pretty much six to eight hours a day. Like I treated it like a, a job or a school, you know? And just like, okay, I finished I finished work. I've got some time off. Let me let me just make this my work. Mm -hmm. And so I st st stuck to a schedule. And, you know, uh, when you decide it's an important question and you really conceptualize the importance of it, then there's no, like, there's no other, like, thing worth doing. There's no worth. Yeah. There's no point in spending your life doing anything other than searching for mm. uh, a, a purpose. Because yeah. if you don't, if you don't do that, or if you don't even search for the truth and objective truth, yes. then yeah, what's the point of anything else? Yeah. Right? If you're not Absolutely. on an objective reality, then you're just living in delusion, right? Yeah. Okay, you figured this out at 19. No, I know this. This is I find this remarkable, absolutely remarkable. Like I, said, I, I don't know what I was. The, I mean, I'm, I'm having to go back 25 years. Mm. Gosh, yeah, to when I was 19. I have to just go back five years. <laughs> not that long ago. Still, you know, still in my prime. Actually. Still in prime. Yeah, you're not fooling <laughs> anyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he, he hasn't gone grey yet like me. So. I got one. Can you, you see got it? one? Can you see it? Listen, brother, I've got one black left. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. You're right. Absolutely. Now, now, Bruno, I'm to bring this to you because mm. my you know, we, we, we know you on Islam Channel as yeah. one of our respected brothers here. Mm. You know, you've been here for, 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 for the last few years. Let's say you're, you're in, the, in the early stages. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. Got... Just in my early 20s still. Early 20s, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but a seasoned veteran yes, here on Islam that. Channel. And I'm of course, that. we know you as our spoken word artist, as, mm. as the brother who's leading the, the four when it comes to Muslim performers and, mm. and, and artistry and, and acting. Now, this is almost like a, a new role you're playing here with Amin, right? Which mm. is almost like a, like a mentor, manager. Actually, let's call it a mentor, because it's more of a mentor than anything right. else. And uh, how has that transition been like for you? Well, I mean, ironically enough, I actually did this entire thing with Ilyas Mao. Right. So right. I was, uh, you know, one of the first people to meet Ilyas, yes. like in terms of the Muslim community. He, At the time I met him, he was an Uber driver who right. was just kind of singing on the side and actually... Uh, you know, I learned something, subhanAllah, because 
two things. One is the way I even met Ilias was that I was producing a film at the time and I needed vocals only backings for the film. I wanted to create a sound score, you know, a soundtrack for the film. And I, I didn't, I was trying to stay away from musical instruments at the time. So, you know, I couldn't, I didn't know really any Nasheed artists. Somebody told me, oh, there's a Somali brother, you know, in a, 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 a town next over that sings, you know, maybe yes. reach out to him. So I reached out to him and we started communicating. And, and by the end of it, you know, I told him, hey, look, if you help me out with this project, I'm going to write some songs for you and I'm going to make you a Nasheed artist. And he didn't even know he didn't know what a Nasheed artist yes, was. Yeah. Okay. But alhamdulillah, he trusted me and you know, we built a very strong relationship. Mm -hmm. And actually for the past nine years, he and I have been, you know, like back and forth, like we've been partners in crime. I should say partners in rhyme. Uh, <laughs> ah, I like yeah? that. Very I like good. That. Okay. Partners in rhyme. All right. So, you know, that process though, informally, you know, I, I wasn't really managing him, but I was mentoring him as an artist because I was more experienced than he was in this capacity yes. and, you know, just kind of opening doors for him. And so I learned a lot from that process actually. Um, and being there for him, you know, even just to help navigate the creative arts space in the yes. Muslim world. So now when Amin comes along, I'm kind of like, oh, I know how to, I've done this before. Yes. It wasn't like I was looking for it. I didn't yeah. really, I didn't think about managing like, you know, I'm an artist myself. I, yeah. I kind of just wanted to focus on my own artistry, but immediately I was like, oh no, I've done this before. It felt like I joked with him sometimes. I'd tell him like all his training, all the time he spent on set was building up for this moment. Mm. I felt like now all that stuff I did in the background, all the time I, I had when I was like, when I was actually his age, I had a an internship at a major record label. Right. Okay, Sony BMG. I had, was like involved in so many marketing efforts and, I, and then I was with Ilias and I'm an artist. So I'm, I had, I'm thinking, wow, this is, I was built for this actually. Yes. This is yeah. something that actually I do have experience in. So, you know, Alhamdulillah, it's so far been very, very smooth. You know, Alhamdulillah, like, like I said, we have literally just announced he's Muslim last week. Right. You know, right. So wow. uh, last week is when we released the first podcast and we've been, you know, sharing it with his social media because he has, you know, his own oh, fans and people yes. from, you know, his previous work. Uh, he also, he's also starring on a show right now on Heartland, uh, sorry, on Netflix called Heartland, yeah. right. which is a major series. So, you know, he's a lot of fans from that. So, you know, now that he's shared that and, and the world knows he's Muslim and, and, you know, we are now going to go full on into this world of Nasheed. Mm. I think what we're going to do next is going to be even more incredible. And I think, no offense, I think it's going to eclipse even the stuff he did previously. Inshallah, yeah. Inshallah. That's the goal, right? We only want to improve and do better because I think for this brother here, the sky's the limit. You yeah. know, mashallah, tabarakallah. Like, he's, he's got talent. He's got skill. He's got the right people around him. He's got buy-in from a lot of, you know, the Muslim leaders and people in our community. Mashallah. Next week, Sheikh Omar Suleiman is giving him an award. Fantastic. You know, uh, the Yaqeen Award called the Confident Muslim Award. And it's to commemorate, right. you know, confident Muslims who are in unique situations and spaces. Yes. And uh, so, you know, in the short period, he's been Muslim. Yes. I mean, like I said, a year ago, he didn't believe in God. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. now he is on Islam Channel. Yeah. And he's <laughs> on a tour in the UK. <laughs> yeah. And yes. it's, it's, it doesn't make sense. No, I, 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 so I'm just kind of along for the ride. I'm like seeing this like miracle happening in front of me. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, this is. I want to see this front row. This is yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah, alhamdulillah. No, it really is, Mashla. It really is. And like I say, within, within, so, so this was only announced last, last week. Last week. Yeah. So what's the reaction been like from the, the thousands and thousands of fans that you have? SubhanAllah, it's been great. It's really, there's been nothing, no negative stuff, nothing really. Uh, it, alhamdulillah, I think it's more, I think it's more nerve wracking for my family than it is for anyone else, you know? Uh, mm. Just because they're kind of, they care about how people th view me more than I really do. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you're 19. No, 19 year olds. We normally don't care about yeah. how the world views us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but alhamdulillah, it's been it's been really good. The amount of support that I've been getting has been uh, honestly like overwhelming and really like comforting. Um, I'm just excited to see how how it keeps going, man. We've been we've been building and kind of festering this, uh, you know, this. Pat this baby, I guess we'll call yes. it. <laughs> yeah. And now we're kind of releasing it to the world and seeing how how it actually all turns out. So no, inshallah. inshallah. And all of the stewardship and, and mentorship, I should say, of of Buna. Now, now Buna, I know we're talking. You know, you've only you know in your mid twenties. <laughs> 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 Does that something in my throat there? This is older, <laughs> one year older than my brother. One year older than my brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but like I said, you've also been in the industry from a very, very young age yeah. yourself. H how have you seen the sector evolve? Mm. And you know, where is it now and where do you see it going? 
It's incredible. I mean, even just, even if I can just speak objectively, even about a slam channel, mm. like I have seen a slam channel yes. grow and a slam channel yeah. for many people, you know, I'm sure the viewers obviously will know, but Islam channel paved the way for a lot of Western Islamic media. Yes. You know, yeah. even having a staple like this, a, a brand that, you know, we can trust and we know represents our interests and values, especially in this day and age when information and news and these things are, you know, it's very muddy. Sometimes we don't know where, you know, where truth lies. So, you know, I'm excited to see the journey we've taken as entities and organizations like Islam Channel and, you know, even the Nasheed world and, yes. and, and just to see, for example, the amount of talent we now have at our disposal. I think in the past, and you know, obviously coming from traditional Muslim families, yes. Arts are something, I don't know what it is. I think in our own cultural sense, like where there's art back home, right? But then when it comes to doing it in English and, yeah. you know, sometimes there's some people don't feel as comfortable. I'm not sure why, but, you know, that's the reality that, yeah. they, you know, they kind of distinguish, you know, Islamic English art from maybe Arabic art yes. or Urdu art. Yeah. And by the way, a lot of these cultures come from long traditions of art and poetry yeah. and, you know, we know of Rumi and Persian writing and all that stuff. So you talk about that history. And, and seeing where we are now in the face of, you know, real misinformation and sometimes even outright propaganda to know that we have a chance to create art that is meaningful, yes. that is educational, that is spiritual, inspirational, motivational, that we can actually use this mechanism of art and creativity and media to help guide people, to help, you know, dispel some of the misinformation that's out there. Um I am just super excited because I know that inshallah, you know, our generation, alhamdulillah, we've yes. gotten to this point, yes. but this generation is going to take it to the next level. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Who knows? Maybe five, ten years from now, this whole thing will be in VR, augmented. Yes. Will yeah. be, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know what yeah. the future holds, but I'm excited at the fact that we have talent yes that we can now you know there should be no difference between what we produce and what the non-muslims or True. other communities True. produce right we should be on the same standard and yes. tier so this is what excites me more that we're actually we're increasing our our, yeah. our efficiency we're increasing our output we're increasing our quality mm. and this is just going to mean bigger and better things down the line True. inshallah True. I mean, it's interesting point you make because i'm just thinking back to when i was a wee lad uh many many years ago when the dinosaurs <laughs> roamed the earth in the last <laughs> century as my kids keep reminding me uh -huh. um you know for, for us it was just you just pretty much kept your head down yeah. And it was just, you know, you get through school and university and, you know, get a job and, and that was it. Mm. But now when I look at my kids, certainly your, your generation, essentially, mm. crikey, my kids are this. I've just realized. <laughs> Yeah, my I daughter's know. 17. This is a, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm like your dad. This is literally, terrible. Literally. Literally. Yeah. Literally. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah. No, no, oh, you want to hear something funnier? Yes. He is 19 years old. How old is the Slam Channel? Oh my God. 20 years He old. is just Islam Channel is turning 20 turning years old Turning 20 yes He is turning 20 years old yeah. Wow He's the same age the as Islam age Channel, channel. <laughs> I'm suddenly feeling my age Yeah <laughs> I'm suddenly feeling my age I know Oh my god I've had one of those moments. I'm going to go into deep depression. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> by the way, this this is wisdom that you this have on wisdom. your face. This is wisdom. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. it. Always think it that way. There is wisdom. wisdom. There you go. But see, what I like, and I think the point I was trying to make there was, is the confidence I'm seeing now. I see mm. it with my children. I see it with yourself, and I see it with a lot of the youngsters that are coming through. Yeah. You're confidently Muslim. I remember I was afraid to pray in my office. I, if I, you know, when it came to the prayer time, I used to go and run into a broom cupboard. Literally, there'd be a broom cupboard. I'd be like, I can't keep disappearing because they're going to think, where's he going? You know, especially in the winter months. They're going to think he's, he's Superman. He's Superman. Going. He goes and then I remember one of the guys, what was his name? Alex, I think it's the Andrew. So Andrew goes, why'd you keep going in that room for? What's wrong with you? And I go, I said, listen, mate, I just need to pray. And he goes, so why don't you go to somewhere and pray properly? I go, no, no, I, go, I can't leave my desk for that long. They're going to think, you know, you get an hour's lunch break and that was it. But now we've kind of, we're, we're embracing Islam to the extent, even in this sector, that the, kind yeah. of the entertainment sector in Hollywood, we're saying, hey man, listen, this is my faith. Yeah, yeah. Respect me. I'm not going to do certain kind of roles, but I'll do everything outside of that, but I'm not doing this. Well, this is why I think the representation piece is so important, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Authentic and representation. Authentic representation. Yeah. Yes. We like we have to be able to show, especially people, my, my peers, like my age and even younger, we have to be able to show these people that you can be, you can, there's, you can do everything yes. and it be uh, still like Islamically correct. You can be Muslim in any space and pave ways and, and make moves and, you know, you can, you, there's no, co you don't have to compromise. You, yeah. you you know there's all there's always a way to do something that you love in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is mm -hmm. for the sake of Allah and i think that you know for a while there's been i i really like there's a you know inferiority complex mm -hmm. as well yes. in the muslim spaces and 
and that's through you know media and that's through just you know, even schooling systems everything that we're always everything that everyone's fed you know even still in schools mm-hmm. is is not really islamically leaning right yeah. so you're going to be taught about evolution and then you're going to be feeling like whatever you're being whatever islam says or whatever we've been told in the quran yeah is is wrong yes. and we're and now we have to question how do we mix these two things together when in reality when you actually do mm-hmm. uh, uh, more research when you actually have you know people speaking and showing you like look this is th- we have we have the greatest gift yes uh, you know and so when we realize how amazing islam is how beautiful this deen is mm. then the only thing that we would want to do is uh, raise it up and share it and spread it no, absolutely. And I, I like actually what you mentioned about his generation because I, I think, you know, in your daughter's age, like these kids nowadays, mashallah, tabarakallah, like even you can see, you know, the response to what's happening around the world right mm-hmm. now. The fact that these kids are mobilized. Yes. They have internet and social media and access right at their fingertips. Like, yeah. I genuinely believe that this generation can change the world. Yeah. Inshallah. Inshallah. Like, you know, that next generation, like, they are going to fix a lot of the problems that not only us, but the people before us created. Yes. And I think this is important to inspire and motivate these young people to let them know that, you know, mm. he is coming from a very, you know, distinct industry where a lot of times Muslims have not been represented and he yes. is willing to come out and wave the flag of Islam. What about everyone else? Yeah. What about all yeah. of us who are, like you said, maybe hiding in our broom closets yes. or you know, afraid yeah. to even you know wear hijab or afraid yeah. to call ourselves by Muslim names? Yeah. It reminds me of after 9-11. Yes. You know, after 9-11, yeah. they said yeah. that you know Muhammad became Mo and yeah. Yusuf became Joe. Joe, yes. And Khadija yeah. became Kha. I don't know. I don't know what you I don't know what you mean, Khadija. Yeah, I, don't know. I don't know how you get to her the yeah. short name, but you know what I mean? Like yeah. that that and I remember that feeling. Mm. Right after 9 11, mm. a feeling like you said, like we were nervous, we were yeah. scared, we felt like we were looking over our shoulder. But to see this generation now just be proud of who they mm. are, it's well, it's a very beautiful thing. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And the other thing I want to just, just pick on now, I should not pick on, oh, we want to put you on the spot now. Because <laughs> we're talking about, look, Martin Mushla, very talented, acting, writing nasheeds, writing poetry. But you've also mastered the art of recitation. No, definitely we can't say more. <laughs> please don't, please don't yeah, ever. Listen, Muslim, but, but, but actually, there, there, there's a beautiful recitation voice, is what, what I've been told. Or a little birdie has told me anyway. So, so there's a word on yeah. the street. Yeah. Word on the street is. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I think we've spoken so much about you know uh, uh, your 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 voice. You know, you've been just mm-hmm. talking about the voice and, and singing. Of course, I know you're on tour, so we're we're going to say, come on tour, join on the tour to hear that. But can we get like a rendition from you? I don't want to call it, no, call it a rendition. Maybe some recitation even mm. from me. Let's hear that that, that beautiful okay. voice of yours. And and just pretext. <clears throat> I mean, this is you again. One year ago, yes, didn't know who Allah was. This is it, absolutely. Okay, now his mashallah, you know. Even the way in which he's learning Quran is very unique because he can't read Arabic. Yeah. Ah, of course. Right? So he is, (laughs) and this is again the beauty of this generation. He is going on YouTube, listening to recitation, and just parroting it back. Right. And, and it's just amazing that first of all the access to technology and how they're util- you know how he's utilizing it and how you know everyone can utilize it for khair and good yes. it should be inspiring to all of us but um, so I just want to give that pretext yeah. that this is not he's never trained formally with anyone he hasn't taken right. any classes but alhamdulillah it's, you know it's uh, it's beautiful to see how far he's come alhamdulillah no, I mean if you're comfortable with it we'd love to hear yeah bismillah, bismillah. bismillah. go for it bismillah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والقرآن الحكيم إنك لمن المرسلين على سرات مستقيم تنزل العزيز الرحيم لتنذر قوما ما أنذر أباؤهم فهم غافلون لقد حق القول ولا أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إنا جعلنا في أغناقهم مولانا فهي إلى الأثقان فهم مكمهون 
وجعلنا من بين يديهم صدا ومن خلفهم صدا فأغشيناهم فهم لا يبصرون وسواء عليهم ما أنترتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون ما شاء الله ما شاء الله حضر I'm I've honestly my my, my hair is standing. <laughs> I can see the goosebumps. <laughs> the goosebumps on my arms right now subhanallah. That was remarkable. That was subhanallah Allah bless you. I started this. hearing it from speakers. No, no, the, 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 the revive it's, it's yes. like how Pakistanis uh, love you Surya Yasin. You hit it in spot on because even our producer <laughs> well, our producer is Albanian. <laughs> 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 she knows the target audience. She knows the target audience. Yeah, she yeah, goes yeah, yeah. this audience love that. But I'm Masha said hold on. Let me get this right. Can't never read Arabic, haven't studied Arabic, listen to YouTube videos. Even though I made a mistake, so my apologies. No, but mashallah, <laughs> that was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. That's what I said. It, it, it yeah. actually doesn't even make sense. It does. Uh, because he's not. Get, he's memorizing like also like parts of the Quran that are yes. not, like you would think maybe you know you go from the back or yeah. yeah. Mashallah, just jumped into Surah Yasin. It's like <laughs> all right, okay. <laughs> Why not? You know, but I think again, when when you're studying Islam objectively and he's learning the ayat and he's understanding the meaning because he's reading and he's understanding like this is what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is talking about. Yes. You know, I think he maybe more than a lot of born Muslims has an appreciation mm. for the text in ways that some of us don't. I mean, some of us take it for granted. Some of us yes. have Qurans that we just dust off the shelf once a year in Ramadan, and otherwise maybe some people have never even read the full translation, right? So I know this is the beauty I think of when you even look at reverts and how they come to Islam and how they're journey is because it's 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 them making this decision and choice whereas for a lot of us you know sometimes born muslims it's just something that we're culturally brought up with yes. right no true true mm. and, and and was that easy to because much like that to me it sounds like someone who's been reading for years and studied the text and knows about you know the, the various uh, uh kind of could you have the, 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 the where you have to elongate where you should yeah. Yeah, yeah. The tajweed, that's the, yeah, yeah. the tajweed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the word yeah, right yeah. The yeah. The word i was missing there but you know how easy or difficult was that Um, I mean, I I think I have, alhamdulillah, I've, I've had two things that have like make it make it a lot easier for me. Is number one, growing up with music all around me, right? From a tone standpoint, from a mimicking standpoint, from the sense of like being able to like copy accents or you know tones. I think from that sense, that's helped me a lot. And then at the same time, also with memorizing scripts, um, I, I can look at transliterations. Yes. And so I know now I've associated every time I'm reciting, I've associated, I can like see the transliteration and the translation. Yes. So I know what mm-hmm. I'm saying and I know like, you know, it, just in my head. Um, and so the, those two things together have uh, helped mm-hmm. me a lot. But yeah, I mean, it just comes with practice, right? Like, but, you know, even if you put 10, 20 minutes a day after Fajr or whenever you want yes. to in, yeah. into just learn something learn one ayah a day yeah. you'll finish you'll finish surah mulk in 30 days right That's true. you'll finish so true. you'll finish so much yes. if you just start and when you start with one thing or just a little bit you'll actually develop a love for it mm-hmm. and then you'll just want to add on to that more and more absolutely and so uh, it's just yeah consistency no, and can you now do the same thing but in a british accent I, you know, I was, I was gonna, <laughs> Can we do the Quran in a British no, accent? No, no. Is, that even, is that a thing? Is that even a... I don't know. I don't I'm know. still waiting for this accent, I by know. the way. I, he got away from it. We've got it before we wrap up. Because yeah, yeah. No, no. Give, give him any... Let him read his bio in British... Read your bio. No, 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 That's no. going to be less I'm embarrassing. Not doing it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> we'll have to come back for a part two for that. Part two. Okay, fair enough. Part two. Actually, he, inshallah, he's going to be a GPU this year. Oh, inshallah. 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 I just made that call now. I mean... I, let's do yeah, it. Yeah, let's yeah. do it. GPU is going to be be yes. back soon. I don't know if that's even public knowledge yet, but well, it is now. It is <laughs> breaking news headlines. I <laughs> mean, Davis. Boy, we better do it now. Yeah, producers, <laughs> producers must love you. I eh? <laughs> mean, Davis headlining GPU, <laughs> hosted by Bono Muhammad. Oh, oh I throw myself done. in there as well. Yeah, you, 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 and you, you saved screening. me a job for a day. There you go. <laughs> I'm the, well, look, gentlemen, believe it or not, we're out of time. Wow. Ah. That's gone so quick. I could spend yeah. another hour with you guys. There's so I much mean, to talk about. So much to talk about. But mm. before we wrap up, mm. what can we look for? I know you're on tour. Tell us a bit yeah. more about the tour. And what can we look forward to for the future? Go first. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, first of all, I want everyone who's watching this, go on social media, go on Instagram, follow Amin Davis. So that 
Amin, A-M-I-N-D-A-V-I-S on IG. You can also follow his other account. He has a public account for his acting work. It's that at that Drew Davis, mm-hmm. okay? So please, inshallah, show our brother some love, support him, follow him. Uh, we really want to bolster his his uh, you know public profile online because like, you know he's a hidden gem right now in our community yes. that I'm trying to bring yeah. to the forefront. So that's number one. Number two, Keep an eye out. He has a music video that's going to be coming out, I should say, a Nasheed video, okay, for his first single yes. called Take Me Away. Uh, we've already shot the video, mashallah, tabarakallah. And I just, I'm giving everyone a heads up now. Yes. Now remember, I'm the same brother who brought everyone Ilyas, okay? Yes. I was yes. the guy who discovered Ilyas Mao. I got to give myself credit there. Because in the beginning, he is Bona Muhammad though. Let's yeah. not say <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm saying that I have a good eye for talent. No, I haven't. Okay, so I, I recognize talent. And I'm hey, telling people. I've got a chance in Bollywood then. Well, I mean, we'll talk to your agents. We'll get back to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's right after the GPU uh, promo. We'll uh, we'll figure that part out. No problem, inshallah. But I mean, I'm just telling everyone now to you know, first of all, make dua for our brother, inshallah, that Allah keeps him steadfast, that Allah subhanahu wa taala protects him and, and and keeps him on the straight path and increases him in knowledge and khair and goodness, all that good stuff. But at the same time, we want him to be an inspiration for the next generation. Mm-hmm. So we want. You know, communities to first of all be excited to know that we yes. have this talent now that we, it's at our, our our disposal. He's here for us. He's here to sh- you know support and share his work with the community, uh, and also just to get ready for everything that's going to come down the line. Because you know this is it's not going to just be Nasheed. It's going to be everything, inshallah. You know, sure. there's there's no reason why he can't be a Muslim leading actor in Hollywood. Yes. There's no reason yeah. why yeah. even a Muslim, as a confident Muslim, he cannot lead productions in Hollywood. So I just want people to get familiar with this face now because you're going to be seeing a lot more of it very soon, inshallah. Inshallah. And I'm going to ask Amin, just like you've been doing for Amin, Amin, let's do it for Buddha. Uh, oh, no, no. That was for me, by the That's way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me talk about him now. Oh. <laughs> Um, no, any, any, any parting words before? before yeah, no, I would just say, you know, thank you for those who support. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I really, uh, I think, I think that, uh, you know, I, I think we have the ability, every single one of us has the ability to really change the world. E- even mm-hmm. if it's on a minute level. Absolutely. Well, inshallah, we want to make it a little bit bigger than minute. Inshallah. I'd say. Um, you know, and just show everybody that there's, you know, because whether we like it or not, people are watching movies right mm, people yes. are listening to music or making music and feel as though there there's no middle ground either they have to choose mm. okay i'm gonna make music and you know just negate any of islamic teachings or they or you know they or they have to stop completely right yes. and there is a middle ground and same thing with film and there there is a way that you can use any skill you have any love you have any passion you have for khair mm. and so that's really what i want to be Standing at the forefront of so, yes. inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. inshallah. Look, I mean, Buna, thank you so much for joining us. Inshallah. It's been an absolute Allah. pleasure having you both there. Yes. Uh, I'm looking forward to follow the progression of both your journeys, inshallah. inshallah. Um, inshallah. And I shall be, uh, maybe I should go back onto the Instagram, Twitter, whatever kids do, yes. and follow you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to be back next time uh, on the Islam Channel podcast. Make sure to tune in because we have some more wonderful guests for you until they're from all of us here. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.